The University of St Andrews and Carrara are embarking on a long-term research alliance, creating new opportunities for both organisations. Earlier this summer, a team of researchers visited to find out more. We're, we're just at the sort of satellite block of ownership here at Moy, um, which where uh, the estate office is based and where, where I'm principally based. Okay. But the bulk of the estate's actually all to the, to the south of, of Moy, where we're at at the moment. So all 23,000 hectares, 57,000 acres, are all to the south. So of a lot of kind of high here. altitude ground here, some, some, some fresh water, Absolutely. quite kind of mix of habitat types. No, you're right. You know. And, and what, what, so what is the estate? What, what, do you, kind of, what are you doing? What do you stand for? So like a, a lot of upland Scottish estates, we're a fairly diverse business um, that we have interest in commercial forestry, despite us moving away from uh, the, the, the pure commercial element of that and restructuring the commercial woodlands that you can see in the north end of the estate here uh, into um, restructuring those back to natural native woodlands. We've got interest in, in renewable energy um, with our fresh water, which you mentioned. Uh, we've got four run of river um, hydroelectricity schemes dotted across the estate um, that uh, supports, uh, that acts as a, a significant financial support to the estate at the moment. We run a seasonal restaurant, which is the kind of gateway uh, as, uh, where visitors will come and normally alight at the UK's highest rail station, uh, Carrower. We've also got interests in deer management. Of course, that's the, the principal um, land management actor um, and what we have to manage intensively uh, to ensure that we generate the landscape scale habitat um, response that, we are, that we're um, setting out to achieve. So you, you mentioned kind of the, land, the land scale habitat restoration there. So I mean, <clears throat> when, you look, when you look at the map here, like you said, you've got a lot of high altitude kind of land um, and there's a lot of kind of peatland as well. So what kind of work are you doing with those? Yeah, no, you're, you're right. We, we are on the fringes of Rannoch Moor to the southeast here. So we've got a lot of blanket bog, mm -hmm. a lot of which sadly is in a fairly degraded state. So one of our driving um, uh, priorities is to restore the degraded peatland. There's no denying um, the, the scale um, of opportunity here. I mean, Carrera in of itself is is a fairly colossal land holding, and that represents uh, a, a, a vast opportunity for, for academic research that uh, excites, I hope, St Andrews, but it certainly excites Carrower. My role primarily involves leading on the nature restoration, nature recovery, um, particularly on the 19,000 hectares of open hill habitats. So this is a fantastic example of peatland degradation here, um, which is linked to historical overgrazing and also pa pa management practices like burning and putting in drainage ditches. The whole landscape's being eroded, really. Um, so peatland restoration is all about restoring the hydrology of the site, um, which is really important uh, for the peat formation, uh, but also for the biodiversity as well. Um, so for wetland species like dragonflies uh, and other invertebrates, for example. Oh, okay. Okay, so the, the preservation looks really good because you could see root and leaf material. Yeah. which looks very much like the, the sedges and grasses growing on the site at the moment. Uh, I think there's different sedges down here. Okay, it's looking good, especially compared to the eroded peat over there because that's really dark and haemophied. So we know that there's more than three and a half metres of peat here. So if, if we went to the sample to the bottom and if we get uh, glacial clay and gravel at the bottom, I wouldn't be surprised if this does cover the last 10,000 years, which would be ideal because it's such a nicely defined basin and the proximity to the really eroded peat there would be a really nice contrast because we've lost the record over there. I think this would be a really good peat for student projects for, to look at the, the pollen record and maybe the plant macrofossils. Because Sarah was talking about what we should have in this landscape and actually we, we don't know. Lots of it is thinking about what we ha might have lost but we don't know exactly the timing. Much of that happened over thousands, maybe hundreds or thousands of years and it's only these records that can start to unpack what is the baseline, when was this uh, a landscape that was that mosaic of peat and maybe trees on some of the drier knolls. Um, so I think this is a really nice site for that kind of study. So particularly what we're focused here at Karawa on is uh, 
nature restoration through reducing the grazing pressure of red deer, um, which were historically uh, very high densities, um, but now we're reducing the densities down to a low enough le level to hopefully uh, restore woodland habitats through natural regeneration of trees and also uh, help to improve the health of other habitats that are sensitive to grazing. So reduced deer densities, what kind of numbers are you talking about and over what period have you reduced? So in the last 15 years or so we've reduced deer down from about 17 deer per square kilometre to currently somewhere between one and three. Um, so that's why the monitoring and the data that we're collecting is so important because that's quite a shift in management uh, and with the purpose of that primarily being to encourage regeneration of woodland through tree regeneration and then also the repairing of other grazing sensitive habitats like peatland. Um, so we're wanting to monitor to see if we are getting that pulse of regeneration um, and how extensive uh, any browsing is um, because it's really important to be led by that response and adapt our management as we go along. We measure so much across Karawa um, on all sorts of different types of plants and wildlife and um, so obviously monitoring tree regeneration is a really important one. Yeah. We also monitor the revegetation of our degraded peatlands. So rivers are a really important indicator of what's going on in the whole landscape because of course all the water that, that runs through the land ends up in the river and that can tell us a lot about what's happening across the whole catchment. And so monitoring the health of the freshwater is fantastic for, for example, looking at changes in hydrology and water quality mm -hmm. in response to peatland restoration. Yeah. Yep. And you can see from these data that the water quality at Corral has been improving um, oh, great. in the last 10 yeah. years, which is absolutely fantastic. Well, long-term data sets are going to be so important for looking at the impacts of climate change and also the interaction between climate change and uh, changes in land management mm -hmm. and the responses on the vegetation and then also the, the animals um, that the habitats support. So it seems that Karawa is such a hotbed of nature-based solutions in a way, um, or could be, with all of this monitoring that you're already doing and you said you've got decades of data yes. that yeah. is calling out to be analysed to think about what change has happened here and how management interventions have impacted on the ecology, the diversity, mm -hmm. etc. Um, and there are so many opportunities also for both ecology, um, biology, geography, and it's such a beautiful place to be, isn't it? What's yeah. your favourite bit about Karawa? Oh gosh, <laughs> Ooh, that's a really difficult question. I think actually literally what we're looking at right now, um, this slope here, and it's really like wonderfully diverse vegetation, lots of lovely beautiful flowers uh, and the trees, um, particularly willow, rowan and birch are starting to come up. I feel like it's really special for me because it's just the beginning. This is quite a significant spot on Karab, um, and it's one of the most difficult to get to bits as you guys experienced <laughs> coming in. Um, but it's also really of strategic importance in terms of deer management um, for us. And there's a lot of potential for regeneration here, which we've discovered through a kind of concerted long-term effort uh, around deer management. And as that uh, vegetation started to recover, we've been continuing that effort to see what's possible here. Um, and uh, it's quite hard to pick out, um, but there are lots and lots and lots of tiny seedlings, kind of waist height, that are getting away now. But it, it, it has the potential to become much more wooded. But it takes a huge amount of time to, to, to change densities across a landscape like this in a, in a permeable landscape where you're interacting with your neighbours and there aren't kind of fences around these land holdings. Yeah. 
So we're down uh, next to the Gulban Hydro Scheme at the moment, um, which uh, with the River Gulban yeah. um, behind us here. Yeah, you can see the river is quite low today. You can see there's, there's, the, looking at the, kind of the, the banks on the side there, it's normally higher than this. But so th this is kind of one, one of the main hydro schemes you've got here. Uh, what kind of capacity? What kind of energy production is that? So across the whole of Karawar, we've got four uh, hydro schemes, with the Gulban being the largest. This is 2.8 megawatts of installed capacity, of, of, from a total of 5.3 megawatts uh, across the whole estate. And what, and what is uh, those kind of numbers? What do they what do they actually kind of equate to for the average yeah. person? So I guess translate those figures. So 5.3 megawatts of installed capacity generates on average about 14,000 megawatt hours of energy per annum, which is enough to power 3,000 homes or I think seven million-ish cups of tea Delicious. at any one time. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I've, I, you know, I, I know about for this area is the kind of the potential development of a, a sort of centre, field centre for research and teaching. Well, I think um, the exciting element for us is embedding researchers um, in a really practical, welcoming space for them to carry out research um, and, 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 that, and that sense of you know, living and breathing the landscape that they're working within um, is, is both exciting, I hope, for researchers, but it's really exciting for Carrera as well. There are so many opportunities beyond just the, uh, the conservation and ecology fields um, with renewable energy, with community engagement, hospitality and tourism. I think one of the, the amazing things is the chance to go back and tell people in St Andrews kind of, kind of what we've seen over the last few days and people from different departments, like you were saying, you know, and, talk, and talk about kind of interdisciplinary potential that there is here for research and talk to people from different schools, not, not just from biology or from you know, geography, geography and stable development, yeah. but to, to go back and actually you know, talk to, I don't know, modern languages or English yeah. or yeah. some of the arts departments yeah. and say, actually, there's, there's this amazing place, you know, yeah. where, where there's a great potential for, for research and, and, and as, uh, you know, and do that now, but certainly once this kind of field centre for teaching research uh, becomes available, what, what a, a facility, you know, what a yeah. great opportunity to come somewhere like here and be able to stay on location exactly. and, and do, you know, yeah. uh, some yeah. interdisciplinary collaborative research. For me, it's one thing to come and do paleoecology and you know some of the, the scientific reasons for doing that, mm -hmm. but it always reminds me in really good ways coming to talk to people who, who live here, who know the place much better than me, um, some of the context for some of the work we're doing. So you can explain the work in, in different ways. Um, that, and you mentioned shifting baselines. And I think for me, that is always the one thing I use in teaching. Mm. Um, but to have a really good example of where the, they are trying to shift yeah. the baseline now, mm -hmm. but we can also approach that in a different way through the research. Mm. And we can bring those two examples together. Uh, I really like that that way of, of having different examples that suddenly meet, um, which we wouldn't do if we just just came and took the cause and did the lab work and then maybe sent them a report. But hopefully what we're doing to help restore ecosystem health um, and nature recovery will give um, Corral, oh, that's more resilient. Yeah, exactly. There'll be a lot more resilience um, for the future under climate change. And it takes keeping faith, I think, and, and, and sticking with it because this is a slow, in this kind of environment, you know, we aren't a tropical forest where things can happen quite quickly. Yeah. This is, a, this is a, an environment where it's cold mm -hmm. a lot of the time, we're quite high up, yeah. it's quite exposed. Things do take a long time. Um, and I think it, it's sticking with it has, has paid dividends and, and we'll continue to do that.